This video is sponsored by Entonal Studios. The piano is not in tune. Did you guys know this? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Unless you're some early music performer or a Zen harmonics nerd, it's safe to assume that every piano and every guitar that you've ever played has technically not been perfectly in tune. And I don't just mean that last time you tuned your guitar you didn't quite get it right, or that your piano's tuning has gone a bit honky-tonk. Even digital instruments, even digital keyboards and MIDI notes on DAWs have also been not perfectly in tune. But you might say, no, David, when I check my tuning against a tuner, I am perfectly in tune. But that's the thing. Even tuners are not perfectly in tune. So if tuners like this don't actually get our instrument into the perfect, natural, optimal tuning of intervals, then how do we actually define whether the interval between two given notes is in tune? For an interval to be in tune, it means that there is a simple ratio between the two frequencies. For example, a perfect fifth is the ratio of 3 to 2, meaning that if the lower note is tuned at 220Hz, then the upper note should be 330Hz, a 3 to 2 relationship. Or in other words, this note is vibrating 1.5 times faster than this note. Likewise, a major third is the ratio of 5 to 4. The relationship of these two frequencies, these two notes, 220Hz and 275Hz, is 5 to 4, a justly tuned major third. It's the simple relationship between these two frequencies which makes them sound so pleasing to the ear. The two frequencies sort of slot perfectly together, marrying into the satisfying and perfectly tuned harmony. When we tune intervals this way, they are said to be justly tuned. This is just intonation. And this definition of tuning wasn't invented or dictated by somebody. It occurs naturally in the harmonic series. Any time you hear a pitch, whether it's a note on the piano, or a singer, or even just a glass being dinged with a spoon, you're hearing more than just one note. You're actually hearing a range of frequencies that all slot together, blend together, to create the sound of that tone. If we hit the note A below middle C on the piano, for example, the main frequency we hear is, of course, A at 220Hz. This is called the fundamental. However, as we can see from this frequency analyzer, at the same time we also hear various other quieter frequencies called harmonics or overtones. These overtones are always related back to the fundamental frequency by the same set of intervals, known as the overtone series or the harmonic series. Between the fundamental and the first overtone, the frequency doubles, giving us a two to one relationship, or in other words, an octave. The next overtone is triple the fundamental frequency, giving us a 3 to 2 relationship between these two overtones, in other words, a perfect fifth. The next overtone is quadruple the fundamental, then it's quintuple the fundamental, then it's sextuple the fundamental, and so on. What you can see is that the physical way that sound is produced naturally leads to this set of intervals with this set of tunings. This standard of tuning is hard-baked into the physics of our universe. So if this is the case, why is my keyboard not tuned this way? When I play A and C sharp together on my piano, I should be hearing the beautiful relationship of 5 to 4 between these two notes. But instead I get this. Listen to that again. The C sharp on my piano is too sharp, about 14 cents too sharp. A cent, by the way, is a unit of measurement we can use to describe intervals smaller than a semitone. There are 100 cent in a semitone, so the C sharp on my piano, the equal tempered C sharp, is effectively 14% sharper than it should be. This all might seem a bit weird, right? If I'm saying that these are the natural, universalized ways that we should tune intervals, then why on earth wouldn't we tune our pianos and guitars to these tunings? Well, as you can imagine, it is for a good reason, and that good reason is that it's actually impossible. It's actually impossible to tune a fixed tuned instrument like a piano or a guitar to just intonation. Imagine I take my piano and starting from this A, I tune every interval to its perfect ideal ratio. 
So now when I play A and E, I get a beautifully, justly tuned 3 to 2 relationship. Or when I play A and C sharp, I get a justly tuned major third, a 5 to 4 relationship. Excellent. However, if I play B and F sharp together, this is not a justly tuned perfect fifth. That's because I tuned everything relative to the root note of A. So all of the notes create justly tuned intervals when played with A, and some of them do actually wind up making justly tuned intervals when played with each other, but many of them don't create justly tuned intervals when played together, and actually create quite out of tune sounds. If we want a pure justly tuned interval between every single note, then our only option is every single time we play a chord or interval, we need to adjust the tuning of the notes in that interval. And of course, on a piano or a guitar or any instrument with fixed tuning or frets, it's just not possible to adjust your tuning in real time. So instead, instruments like the piano and the guitar have to put up with being tuned to what's called a temperament. A temperament is a system where we subtly adjust or temper the way that we tune each note on the scale to make the tuning more practical. It's like a compromise. And across history, various different temperaments have been used. But the temperament that is nearly universally used today and almost definitely the only temperament that you've ever interacted with is 12 tone equal temperament, 12 tet. To tune in 12 tet, all we have to do is tune each octave to a perfect two to one relationship. And then we equally divide the space between each octave logarithmically by 12. This means that apart from the octaves, none of the intervals on our instrument are justly tuned. However, the thing is, to varying degrees, they're all close enough that our ears don't really notice that they're out of tune. The fifths and fourths, for example, are actually very close, only two cents away from where they would be if they had been justly tuned. And in tuning, two cents is basically nothing, it's negligible. I think most people would find it pretty hard to distinguish between a justly tuned perfect fifth and an equal tempered perfect fifth. The most notably out of tune interval in 12 tone equal temperament is the major third. It's 14 cents sharp from where it would be if we justly tuned it. And although there are other intervals in 12 tone equal temperament which are further removed from their justly tuned counterparts, because the major third is very much meant to be a harmonious consonant sound, it's the most noticeable and frustrating that it's not actually perfectly in tune. It doesn't really matter that our tritone interval is quite wildly out of tune because it's actually meant to sound quite dissonant. But even with its sharp major third, our ears are remarkably forgiving when it comes to 12 tet, which is evidenced of course in the fact that almost all popular music that you've ever listened to, and I mean almost all of it, is in 12 tet, and you've probably never been sitting there thinking that sounds wildly out of tune. Although we think of tuning as something that must be precise, our ears can actually be very forgiving. And the fact that we are surrounded by 12 tet in pretty much every piece of music that we listen to from birth, our ears become acclimatised to it. We come to expect the slightly out of tune, slightly rough nature of these intervals. Which means, ironically, when we do actually hear justly tuned intervals, like the ones I've been playing in this video, they actually sound a bit uncanny, they sound a bit weird, even though they're the ideal way to tune an interval. So if your instrument has fixed tuning, like a piano or a guitar, you can't exactly spend the whole song retuning every single note in real time. So you have to instead settle for a tempered tuning system, most likely 12 tone equal temperament. However, there are some instruments where you can actually constantly adjust the tuning in real time as you play. For example, non-fretted string instruments like the violin or the cello. Because these instruments have no frets, they can adjust their pitching as they play. Beyond its four open strings, a violin doesn't have to commit to one tuning of each note. So they can, on each occasion that they play a note, pitch it slightly differently, pitch it slightly higher or lower, as required to get the most justly tuned interval possible. It's an aspect of music making that pianists and guitarists just don't have to think about. If we're asked to play a B flat, then we just play the one B flat option that we have on our instrument. 
but if a violinist is asked to play a B-flat, they will consider whether to pitch it slightly higher or lower based on the harmonic context in which we're going to hear it. For example, for the opening chord of Bach's Violin Sonata in G minor, because these notes are pitched together as a chord, the player can strive to pitch the B-flat here so that it creates a justly tuned sixth with the G up here, a ratio of 5 to 3. However, when they encounter these B-flats, if the violinist were to play the exact same version of B-flat that they'd played before, it would actually now sound a bit out of tune. As you'll see from this demonstration, if the player doesn't adjust the tuning of the B-flat when it occurs in the scale here, then even though they're using the same finger position that gave the perfectly tuned B-flat before, it will now, in this context, sound out of tune. What the player has to do is, for the second instance of the B-flat in the scale, is slightly lower their finger position, slightly lower the tuning. Players of non-fretted instruments like the violin are constantly using their ears to optimise their intonation. And this is one of the great challenges of an instrument like the violin. In fact, it adds even more challenge when the violinist is then playing alongside a fixed tuned instrument like the piano, because the violin player now has to juggle optimising their own intonation, whilst also making sure not to clash with the fixed 12 tet tuning of the piano. Entonal Studio is a plugin and app that allows you to retune your keyboard or MIDI roll to any tuning or temperament that you like. Choose either from one of the many presets or create your own microtonal tuning system, and then you can load in any other third party synth or virtual instrument and retune it in real time. Making microtonal music or playing in different temperaments is something that can often be really awkward in a DAW but Entonal makes it possible to make microtonal music easily and smoothly using your existing collection of third-party VSTs. Until the end of September, you can use coupon code BENNETT30 to get 30% off Entonal Studios, bringing the price down from $95 to $66, which I think is great value for money. And you can also try Entonal Studios out with a free trial. Another instrument that's not fixed to any tuning system is the human voice. Just like we saw with strings, a singer in a choir will strive to be as justly tuned as possible at all times, constantly making subtle adjustments to their pitching to eliminate what's known as beating. Beating is the phenomena we hear when two pitches that are close but not the same are sounded together. If I play two sine waves together, one at 400Hz and the other at 402Hz, we can hear this interference between them, a sort of roughness. That sound is what we call beating. What we're hearing is the difference between the two frequencies. The beating sound is effectively a third pitch played at 2Hz, i.e. the difference between those two sine waves. If I adjust the frequency of this wave down to 401Hz, then now the beating can be heard at half the speed it was, because now we're hearing a 1Hz beating rather than 2Hz. And if I again reduce it down so now both sine waves are at 400Hz, well the beating has now disappeared. This is how violinists in a string quartet or vocalists in a choir adjust their tuning. When two notes are close to a perfect ratio, but not quite, we'll get this beating sound, this roughness of tone. By listening out for the beating and then adjusting your intonation to resolve it, you can bring the interval perfectly into tune. For example, in this footage of the recording sessions for John Williams' iconic Duel of the Fates, Williams isn't satisfied with the tuning of the choir, so he instructs them to listen closer for the beating between their frequencies. Oh, we have a pitch, please. And quiet with the pages. 33, 1, 2, C. And see if we can 
have the sound less disturbed by still improved intonation. You'll hear a lot of beating in that. The same principle of tuning applies whether you're stacking many vocal lines in a choir or stacking vocal lines in a DAW. In this clip, Jacob Collier describes how he strives for just intonation when layering his vocal harmonies. In this arrangement, I always, always strive to be justly in tune because just intonation is so much bigger and so much more resonant and actually inspires more endorphins in the body than equal temperament on the piano. Now, earlier I said that guitars can't play in just intonation because they can't retune in real time. And I'm sure that got many of you wondering whether it actually would be possible to adjust your tuning pegs as you're playing to achieve justly tuned intervals. And although I don't think this would actually be possible in a live real-time environment, you could actually achieve something close to it in the recording studio. And a great example of this is the song Scar Tissue by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Scar Tissue opens with this major tenth interval. In other words, a major third but an octave wider. Now, do you remember that I said in 12 tone equal temperament, the major third is actually about 14 cents sharper than it is in its ideal tuning? Well, guitarist John Frusciante could obviously hear this discrepancy in tuning, because for the intro of this song, he actually opted to tune his A string 14 cent flat, resulting in this opening major tenth interval being justly tuned, something that would never normally be possible on a standard tuned guitar. As Paul Davids demonstrates in this clip, if you play along with Scar Tissue with a standard tuned guitar, you'll hear the clash between your 12th tet tuned major tenth and Frusciante's perfectly justly tuned major tenth. Okay, so here's a little snippet from the intro. And with my guitar. It is out of tune, definitely. It doesn't sound nice together. Now, Frusciante couldn't keep his guitar tuned like this for the rest of the song because any other time he wanted to use his now down-tuned A string, it would be out of tune. But as he's in the recording studio, not on a stage, he has the freedom to record the intro in this just intonation and then retune back to standard 12th tet before recording the remainder of the song. I've been saying throughout this video that the reason a keyboard instrument can't have all justly tuned intervals is because that would involve retuning the instrument in real time. But considering that I can use a plugin like Entonal to adjust the tuning of my MIDI keyboard, is it possible that I could actually record a piece of music that changes tuning during the piece to make sure we're always hearing justly tuned intervals? At the end of my Why Do We Use 12 Notes in an Octave video, I did actually play a piano piece where I'd set the keyboard to just intonation. However, for that piece, all I did was tune the keyboard to just intonation relative to the note A, and then play a piece of music in the key of A major, which meant that although many of the intervals in that piece were justly tuned, some of them were not. Could I write a piano piece where, with each chord change, the intonation of the piano is digitally adjusted, allowing each chord to be tuned in just intonation? Well, I decided to give it a go. What I found was this technique certainly made the major chords sound really pure and clean in a way that you could never achieve usually on a piano, but there are still some awkward bits of tuning in the melody line, particularly when the melody is using a chromatic note or it's straddling the moment that we change from one tuning to another. Have a listen and see what you think.
As I mentioned briefly earlier, 12-tone equal temperament is only our modern temperament system, and historically other temperaments were used, which have some really interesting features, some really interesting advantages and disadvantages when compared to 12-tet. So I will be doing a video on historical temperaments in the future, so if you're not already subscribed, do consider subscribing to make sure you don't miss that video.